can hear you now. <laughs> good, good. Well, hello, everybody. So this is um, a session for people who've never looked inside a beehive before and certainly wouldn't want to get anywhere near near bees and get stung by them because they're, uh, they're all out to get you, aren't they? But uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's not the case. They're, uh, bees are generally, generally pretty calm. Um, we had planned to do this at the Ipswich and East Suffolk um, Teaching Apiary, Beekeepers Association Teaching Apiary, but it's pretty windy today. Um, so we've had to relocate to Barry Powell's um, home apiary, just in his back garden, so you can start see we've got a beehive just here that we're going to have a look, a look at, and we've got a bunch of bee, beehives behind, so that Barry does all his um, queen, queen breeding and queen rearing we're rearing with and he'll be he'll be doing a lot more talking about that in a, in a few minutes um he's very very powerful the expert i'm just the the beginner in this game and he taught me everything that i know so, <laughs> so any, anything that goes wrong is is my fault so but you're not not really here to listen to me jabbering on you want to have a look inside the beehive and what what i know we've got um some existing beekeepers on the call, so um, they should already know what it's like inside a beehive. Um, but there are a bunch of people, obviously, that uh, are curious to see and curious to know what it's look like, what 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 goes on inside. So before we dig in, so this is a this is a hive, um, pretty uh, pretty straightforward. It's basically a big a big box. Um, they the box is in uh, a couple couple of parts. There's the, the main main box which is about 18 inches square or about 45 45 centimeters square and oh i don't know what about about this about the same deep it's a big a big cube and that's where the bee the queen bee which we've always got a queen bee in there um all her workers and a few drones live um with all the the eggs and larvae and capped brood as the colony develops so colonies kind of go through the winter um, nice and nice and quietly survive the winter and then the queen wakes up and starts laying eggs um, at, at quite a rate. Um, it's probably quite surprising to realise that in the peak season when she's when the queen bee really gets going she lays between one and two thousand eggs every day. So that means she's basically for every over a 24 hour period she's laying an egg every minute so it's not much of a life for a queen bee but then you can imagine if that's what she's doing you can kind of imagine how many bees are likely to be in this in this beehive so at the peak of the season you're likely to have somewhere in the region of say 50 to 60 thousand bees in here and more bees being 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 bred all the time um, so we'll have a look inside, and yes, you'll see that there's quite a lot of bees. Um, thankfully, we're with, uh, with Barry Powell and, and his bees, and the, the ones that he breeds are, on the whole, I'm hoping it's all the time, very gentle. So that's why we've, we've only got a, uh, um, a, little, a, little, a little veil, and you generally don't need gloves um, um, to, to wear when you're inspecting, inspecting bees. In fact, it's better if you don't wear gloves or if you wear um, thin nitrile gloves, which I've got a pair in my pocket just in case. Um, <laughs> of, of these, these gloves, mainly to keep my hands clean um, and they, they tend not to sing, sing through them. But it's, it's easier to examine bees like that because one thing bees don't like is being bumped around and being, uh, um, being, being messed about. You've got to be very gentle with them. So, before we have a look in, we're all we're all kind of set. Um, so, have we got any any questions before we start? Yeah, they're all muted, so they can't ask yeah. questions. Yet. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder if people want to have a have a wave or ask a question before we start to have a look inside. Uh, just a second. I'll see if I can uh, sort that. Uh, I think I've asked if everyone wants to unmute themselves, but. Hang on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, sorry. I think I've asked if everyone wants to unmute themselves. 
Yeah, so if you want to unmute yourself, you can and ask a question. Is that the entrance that they're all at at the moment, on, on just in front of you? Oh, Hang on. I can't hear Barry. Can't hear Barry. Hang on, so need to unmute you. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> there you go, Barry, unmute yourself. <laughs> <again. laughs> it's a new system, we're getting used to it. <laughs> is that the entrance, Barry? <laughs> uh, the entrance is here, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Thanks. You can see. I'm guessing you can see a bunch of bees just hanging around at the front. Yeah, they're hanging yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just ridiculously placid. It's such very, nice bees. Very placid, yeah. <laughs> which is why, which is one one good reason why we're here. So let, let's have a look inside, if, if that's okay for everyone. Because that's yeah. essentially why we're here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're removing the roof, and that reveals a crown board. This is a crown board. Now, as, as, as Barry said, this is a, a, a national one and a half. The reason we have one and a half nowadays is because the queens of today lay far more eggs than they did 20 years ago. So we have to have one and a half boxes. If you try to reduce it to one box, They'll, cr they'll get cramped, and the first time of swarming is when you cramp the bit when you cramp the queen from laying, so you give her plenty of room. So this is what they look like inside. Um, can you see in there, Barry? That would be the cameraman. <laughs> well, I'll now turn to being being the cameraman, and I'll just um, pop it up there. So pop it. This is what they look like inside. Um, we'll have a look. Can everyone see, see that? Okay. Yep. There you go. Yep. So the first comb comes out. This is normally a comb full of pollen, which as you can see, you try to keep the pollen comb on the outside of a, of a brood nest at all times, because the, um, you don't want pollen in the center, you want it on the outside. So the outside comb has got a bit, in this instance, has got a bit of drone comb in it, which I like because I have to have lots of drones in the queens. Um, we can leave this comb out for a little while. So, Barry, can we just, no. just hold on a second? I don't want to take the camera off. Um, point it around so that I can, I can follow what you're doing. Yes, of course. Uh, right. Okay. You can see me, I think. I see you now, Barry. <laughs> I move my finger out of the way of the lens. So as you say, that's the pollen comb, so we'll put that out of the way for a few minutes. Well, one thing to mention about these, um, the, the bees, the, uh, the, be the bees need a, a small spacing between them. Um, so all these, all these bees, um, frames that the bees are on, are exactly 35 millimeters across, which gives a nice little space just for the bees to go. It's, it's to go done so that the, the queen, the bees can walk back to back on each comb without um, any interference. Um, what you must also remember at this point, you must never pull a comb out the center of a, a brood nest because as, you, as Barry just said, you've only got a quarter inch on each side. And if you, if you pull it out the center, the queen is nearly always on that comb and you'll then roll her, which is bad for the queen and for you, which you lose to the queen. Anyway, let's go through. This is the second comb. We should see a bit of brood on this comb. We do. <coughs> see, now that, that, is, that is good. That is a nice patch of brood. The lines across, of course, are the wire. Queen cell? Is there a queen cell there? Uh, yes, there's just a... No, it's a play cell. That's a play cell, yeah. A play, play cell, cell is yeah. totally different from a queen cell. They couldn't... That's, that's just... Uh, where, they, where certain times of the life of a bee, they make them into um, practice cells. Then they, they say, go oh, and make a few practice cells. You might. I'll show you a proper one in a minute too, from another hive. But um, as you're going through the hive like this, each... See, there's another reasonably good cell of a packet brood. And you've got, this, that's what you call a, a good comb, because you've got food around the outside, and you've got a layer of pollen, 
and then brood. Yeah, I just hold that across and then I can just zoom in. You know, it's level. Um, Sorry, Barry. What do you mean by a brood cell? So this this um, these areas here are brood cells. So the queen's laid an egg about about uh, a week or so ago, and that egg has hatched into a larva which has grown, and then the bees cap that cap those um, larva, and and that's what's called a, a brood a brood cell. So these these are capped brood all these here, and um, usually you can mistake that for you think that might be might be cat honey, but it's because it's this kind of biscuit colour that that's a giveaway that it's um, brood. So this, in a, in probably about a week's time, a young bee will hatch out of each of these each of these cells. Um, Thank you. Around, around here is usually a ring of pollen all the way around, and then outside of that here means we've got honey, and it's, we'll probably see it here on some other frames. It's a very shiny substance in there, isn't it, honey? Yeah. Now that is all honey. You see, there's no brood in there. Yeah. Yeah. But as you can see, see in there, some nice, it's all, all on cap. So basically, the bees um, take the honey, put the honey in there. Yeah, put the honey in there, and then dry it out. Um, fill it less than 20% water, and then the, then they will cap it. And that, that's what you normally do with these caps. Well, that's, that's, can you get close enough to see any eggs in there? No, that, what we're looking for is a little grain of rice. Yeah. You can see the semicircles of the yeah, larvae in there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see them feeling up there yet. They might be better on the next frame, it's darker. No, it's more a case of being able to focus first of the camera being able to focus. So I think it may, you may be able to see on there, there are some young, young larva. As a beekeeper, if you're looking through and see, um, checking your hive and you see fresh eggs, then you're happy as a beekeeper to put the queen there and his legs. So you don't need to see it. Um, and, and, and it's it's quite difficult to hear, Barry, now. Yeah, you got the speaker there. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's nothing much to show in that one either. It's not uh, not easily seen. Yeah. Are you on the Bluetooth speaker, Barry? Um, I am, but unfortunately, it's uh, it's didn't run that. Let me see if I can get get closer. Yep, there we go. There we go. Is that better? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Does it fall off? Now these are all these are all combs that the queen hasn't been on yet, so there's no eggs in any of these. We'll have to go down to the brood chamber and find a few eggs, I think. We'll go and have a look in a second. We'll look at the last two. I hope you noticed Barry's hand. That's that's the result of about fifty million things. Over the over the years, are they different? <laughs> Barry, Barry's been a big keeper for I think is it, is it seventy years. Seventy now? odd years, yeah. Seventy years now, yeah. So I think his, nice um, funny, his blood is probably almost a room. Yeah, I think his blood is probably uh, fifty percent bee venom. Now, let's have a look in the uh, bottom box. Now I find the best way to put the super is to just lay it down the side like that. They don't come out then. Stay as long as you like. As a, as a beekeeper, the first time you see Barry do that, you're absolutely stupefied. You think, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> now, you have a dummy board at the back of the box. That is just a simply a blank board which you put in there so you can take out. In that case, you don't need to damage any of the combs. You've got a bit of space to work with immediately. So, now, so do we have any questions as we're going along? You're all very, very patient and quiet. We can. Now this is the honey coat. This is the stores. Coat. We are listening very intently. We are. <laughs> <laughs> there, is your, there is your sealed honey. And normally, bees won't touch sealed honey. If you want them to to use a sealed comb, see there it is on that side. That's more or less. That's all their stores. Yeah. This is perfectly good honey, but they will 
they'll use seal stores for the winter. So they're storing that. Yeah, yeah, we've got the camera back. Um, I think we have issues with the uh, with the phone, the battery charging. Um, oh, right. I always keep going, keep going blank. Okay. <laughs> Someone's put a frame, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, we should be coming to where there's some eggs, I hope. Yes, yeah, so, uh, here we are. On this cone, you've got eggs, seal brood, larvae, food, and everything. So you may you may wonder why by concentrating so much on on the on the details of the the kind of brood, larvae, and egg. And egg. Um, as a beekeeper, it's kind of critical to know uh, the development stages of the of the of the bees so that you can um, manage them well and so that they they're best for you for production, for producing queens, producing. See if you can um, see that one. That is solid egg. Can you see that one at all? Yeah. So we're looking here. Oh, there we are. So, That's perfect picture. Amazing. Yeah. That little piece of rice. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's oh yeah. In the middle yeah. there. So every beekeeper will know that the queen lays an egg three days later, it turns into a larvae. And then another six, six days later, later it gets capped. And 12 days after that, um, the, young, the young bee emerges and gets to work. There's a comb which is on a bit further on, the stage is a bit further on, you see. If you can find a young bee hatching, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> have a look. No, I don't think they're quite think, far enough on. I think, which, um, they're, yeah, I think they're a little bit on the light side. A little bit, yeah. 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 We've got a drone on the other side there. Drone, drone the bigger ones. Same, you've got all real. Again, I don't. That's drone food at the bottom. Yeah. Which is right. I'll just show you one of these, these drones. They're absolutely gorgeous little creatures. Where are they? There he is. This guy. Here. Which one do you want? That guy there. What's that? What are you looking at? A drone bee. A drone. All right. There we go. Right. Oh. I'll let the on. camera focus a moment. There we go. That's the sort I like to breed with because they, they're ideal for breeding. How can it twist around like that <laughs> without breaking its leg off? <laughs> <laughs> There's a good cone oh, of food, God. you see. Okay. The nice things about drones, um, if you didn't, didn't realise that but drones can't sting you, so you're not worried about um, picking up a drone generally. They make a lot of rackets, um, but they don't, they don't sting you. Occasionally, um, you get a rogue drone in a, in a hive, which, say, for example, that one, which I wouldn't want because it's it's, it's no good to me, so I'll kill it off. And there's Hang one on. other one there. <laughs> what is it? I don't it? want them mating with my queen. It's a oh, I very, very particular about the drones that mate with his queen. How do you know they're um, not your drones? When, a, when the queen emerges, now there's the queen. Are they? They're <laughs> so, right. Let's just go look at the, look at the queen. Uh, All right, it's let, the kind of the ninja focus. that I can't find the queen. See her? There she is. So the queen is the one that's a bit longer than the others. And she's got a green, green mark. Now you know the, why you mark the queen? Because A, you can see her better. And B, you mark her with a colour so that you know how old she is. So this queen is last year, last July in fact. Yeah, isn't she lovely? Lovely queen, isn't she? Yeah, we, we can't quite see her very well. We're getting a very uh, poor quality camera footage. Well, it's, a, it's a photographer. Yeah, yeah she is. Yeah. yeah. She is slightly different colour as well, isn't she? Very long in the abdomen. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, she's now looking for cells to lay an egg in, isn't she? Am I doing? I'm watching something about bees. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, she's um, she's already laid these, as you can see. She's, she, these are all grubs in the cell. Can you see those? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the larvae. Keep, keep, keep the camera still, and then we will. Yeah. 
There's the queen. So when you've got a, a colony that's absolutely ram packed with bees, it's a you can all, you can, if you pick up queen, always pick up with the wings. Don't don't try and pick her up with the body because you'll squeeze her. So just get hold of her wings. Like right that. And then you've got her. See the right. queen? That's how you'd mark her. Can we see that okay? Yeah. 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 Huh. Everybody's going down. Put her down, Barry, put her down. <laughs> <laughs> So we know we've got a queen in the colony. So at the same time you're looking through here, you're looking through for problems with with the brood. And of course, you now that, that comb has got everything you wish for. It's got eggs there, grubs, lots of pollen, a little bit short of food. You don't want to worry about the food because you don't really want food in the brood chamber during the breeding season. You want it full of eggs and brood. So any cones you get with the uh, stores in the, in the middle of the road box, certainly move it to the outside or to next door. Now that, one thing I'm learning as a beekeeper is that you see all the cones that Barry's got, and they're all beautiful and pristine and even. Whereas um, in, your, in your beginning as a beekeeper, which I consider, consider myself to be, um, the cones are never quite as neat and tidy as that. And it, and it just kind of makes life harder for yourself. And this is why... Experienced beekeepers just kind of breeze in and out and have no problems at all. And us beginners have uh, real issues with manky comb, not able to pull the frames out properly. It's all a nightmare. I do notice when I'm watching his videos, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure then. He doesn't, he doesn't even shake them either if he can't find a queen. <laughs> I was waiting for that comment. <laughs> See, that's a comb where they put the, the, you're getting near the front of the hive. So what happens normally, a bee comes back loaded with pollen and the younger bee takes the pollen from that bee and stores it. Now, if there's a lot of pollen coming in, they store it in the first comb they can get to. So the, in this instance, they, they fill that comb almost with pollen every empty space. Now, if you can just turn it around, I can, I can then zoom in on a bit, a bit, a if you guys can see that, so the majority of the frames, mm -hmm. the, the cells, are bright yellow. They're filled with pollen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Keep it still. Oh, there yeah. You could, oh, you could Keep see it, it, it a lot yeah. better there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've just turned so it Would they an fill those bit. right to the top before they put a cap on them? Uh, well, they don't cap them. With, with, oh, they don't pollen, cap those. They don't cap it. The pollen, is... pollen is mixed with honey, ready to feed the young bees with, so it will keep, it's like honey, it goes solid in the winter, but it don't, it, they don't cap it. Did you say that honey. you capped the, um, the honey, though? Do they cap the honey? They cap, the, they honey, cap yeah. the honey, yes. Because okay. the honey was... Right. Yeah. Otherwise, it absorbs water. And there's a lot more pollen there, look, on that comb. You see, you've got a few bit of drone comb in there, which I say I do enjoy to see, and lots and lots of pollen. I believe oh. the bees put a little bit of honey over the top of a pollen cell to seal it. Am I correct? They, they can do it. They can do if, if they're not likely to be using it for a while. They can then do. It. They or can if do they're that. short of space, they will certainly put it on a pollen cell. Now here's your outside comb, which should be, as far as I'm concerned, full of pollen. There we go. Another lovely. It's, it's interesting. So, as a, if you sort of knowing nothing about bees, you think it's all about honey, but um, really for the bees, the big a big thing for them is pollen, because they're they're feeding these young young bees. As soon as the bee hatches, that after three days from the egg, um, that that's fed a mixture of uh, pollen and honey for another six days, and I think it increases thousands of times in size in those six days. And it's just fed, 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 fed. Yeah, no. if, you, if you've got a thousand bees a day hatching out, you need a lot of pollen and still feed them with. And whilst Barry's talking to you, I'll, I'll show you a queen cell for the ones that haven't seen a queen cell. Um, the next time I've, I've got along here is, is I've got queen cells in it with this. I'm lurking it supersede. So I'll show you a queen cell. Would you put the uh, would you put the um, the dummy board back in that other side now, or does it have to go back in the same side that you took it out? 
it'll, it'll put it back in the same side that it took it out. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, but it's had to go off to another to another one of his uh, many colonies. Some of us only have about <laughs> six or seven colonies. This, this is what you don't want to see in your colonies. That is, that is a swarm cell or queen cell. Now, one thing I find with, with running one and a half brood chambers is that I can always lift the super off and I can see these cells along the bottom without checking the hive. So I can, do, I can check for swarming in a few seconds. So what I go along is, is you can just lift the super off and they always build the queen cell like that one. On the bottom. They always see what? Can you see the grub in there? They always build the queen cells on the bottom. Always build the bottom, the queen cells on the bottom of the super combs. <coughs> if you've got a brood and a half system that Barry runs, you have this, this half that Barry took off earlier. And so this is the bottom. So he would look for queen cells along these ridges here. And if he sees them, then he knows he's got problems. It's a very quick way of examining the without having to disturb them all. It's not 100% effective, but it's, it's pretty good. 95%. But the benefit of, of keeping these sort of bees, as you can see, they're very docile. They don't get a, don't get annoyed. You can do anything with them. You can wave your hand over them. Um, all sorts of bees you must to your area, which is the most important thing. I used to know Brother Adam for quite well years and years ago, and uh, he yeah, always name dropping there, Barry. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, he always said, um, "Breed the bees. Don't breed the bees to." Uh, to suit the bees, breed to suit the occasion where they where you are, and it does work. It's why it's so very often you find that some beekeepers um, import bees from different countries. Can you repeat what the uh, Barry said? Very, very no? Hang on, hang on. Sorry, what was that, Barry? Could you repeat? Could you ask Barry to repeat what the, the gentleman said about uh, uh, you suit the bees or you 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 breed the no, bees? What? Yeah. yeah. So what did Brother Adam just uh, say to you? You breed bees to your needs bees and not to your, the bees. For your area, to suit your area. And you, you will always find, if you, if you buy, a, as some people do, an expensive queen from Spain, Italy, Greece, you very seldom find that that queen will go through the winter. The bees will nearly always supersede her before the winter. So in fact, they're getting one of their own species in the hive for the winter. Because Spanish and French bees don't usually winter very well in England. So the bees know, they know this, so they supersede her. Which is exactly what I'm letting that, that other one do where I just showed the queen cell. That hive is, is two, that queen is two years old. So I'm finding that after two years, they begin to fail. So you change them. So in that instance, I've let them build queen cells, and I shall take two or three queens out, and we might get time to show you how to make a nucleus later on. But um, I use those queen cells to make nucleus, because they always, when they're superseding, they always take a lot of care with the queen, so you're going to get a good queen, and she's ideal to carry on um, like a, as a daughter of, the, of, of her mother. So this is how I say, this Hang queen on. was on last July. I put her in last July. She's a good queen, and she's just about on the peak of lay. As you can see, she's on on uh, 20 combs out of 22. I just need to interrupt by So I'm not 100% certain whether the battery on the phone is going to last too much longer. Um, I hope it will. I feel like I'm plugged into a battery charger, but I'm getting lots of warnings to say the battery's going well. Um, so, uh, Get, yep. get them out and go off air because for a minute or two temporarily. Um, this, this is a warning. Okay. So, as we say, that, that's why I am so keen on getting the right, the right, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the right drones in the hive. Because the right drones make a good queen. Without lots of drones, you don't get the best queens. And, I, and if I, when I breed them, I'll probably breed 100. Uh, of that 100, I kill off 30 because they're not the right color, right the queen for me. And I make sure that they they are like this. I mean, these these are quite a nice bit of handle. You can do anything with them. You don't need, you don't need smoke. Um, I haven't lit the smoker to raise it to some of these on highs. And, and you don't, 
need to worry. I mean, they, they docile, as, as Carrie just said. You, you don't need a suit on. Um, as you can see, we're both in our shirts today, which is good. Can I just ask? But that's that's, uh, that's basically inside the standard hive. Sean has a question. Do you want to show? I can make a new oh, And so, do we have some questions from people yeah, who've sure. never never seen in a hive before? Or? Yeah, I had a, a question about how come those bees are so docile. Is it just through breeding, or is it the breed of bee, or is it because they're used to being handled? What 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 makes them so docile? It's starting with a good breed of bee first of all, and carrying on that breed. Once you get the breed to suit your area, you want to make sure you keep it. Um, so the queens and the drones are obviously the most important. Um, <clears throat> I know that those those um, queens that are hatch out of that next hive are going to be the daughters of this. So I know that they're going to be 50% of this this um, this bee. The other 50% is made up by what the what drones she mates with. So if you're careful and have the right drones, so I try to flood all these hives, and there are nine hives here which I breed from, I try to flood all the hives with, with the right drones. I don't like black drones, and as, I, as you've seen, they're all, all a yellow drone, um, because I want them to mate with a with yellow queen, because all, all the queens are yellow. So what Barry's talking about here is really quite incredibly advanced beekeeping. You know, we say he's been, he's been beekeeping for um, a few seven, years, seven, a few years, 75 years. Um, so what he's doing is really, really incredibly technical, and he just kind of glibly goes over that. Um, one thing that um, is, I think, has been been found to be the case is that the calmness of the bee is a trait that's quite easily inherited from colonist to colonist. So if you have a, um, if you have say ten colonies of bees, and five of them are a bit on the grumpy side, and five of them are Kind of nice and pleasant you would breed from the nice pleasant ones and then that their daughters the daughter queens are more likely um to be more pleasant bees to handle so that's just a, a kind of a kind of rule of rule of thumb so you, you kind of always breed from bees that you like and you know you work well with yes so basically what barry is saying putting it in a simple language 50 percent of the genes of a queen are her own so the daughters will have 50% of the queen's genes. Now the other 50% is made up by whatever drones she mates with. So if you, if you pick a right drones, she's going to mate with drones of, this, of a similar type of color and temperament to what the hive is. Yeah. And one of the tricky things with drones is that because the queen goes out, she goes out on a mating flight and she will go, she may go two or three miles away, um, to what's called a drone congregation area, where all the drones hang out, waiting for queens to turn up so they can mate with. And she'll mate with, um, I don't know, between, it's there between 10 and 30 drones. Um, so if this is a mating area a few miles away, you, you don't have an awful lot of control uh, whether who, who drones those are. So what Barry does early in the season is goes hell-bent on breeding drones in his colonies so that when the queen goes out, those drones follow her out, and and the chances are that she'll she'll mate with those drones. Yes. So what, what she'll mate. Sorry. Ma sorry. 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 What Barry is saying that the, the books will always tell you that there's a drone congregation area, but if you've got enough drones in your hives, queens will mate within a few hundred yards of the hive because because they'll be followed by the drones from your hives. And mate very quickly. I mean, I have seen one mate within 10 feet. So the drone congregation area is a conversation point, not necessarily they will mate with the, with the drones, but there are ways of making sure that they mate with the drones that you want them to. Um, apart from artificial insemination, of course, you can get it so you can get about a 90% certainty of, of making sure she mates with the drones. But that, that's a bit more technical, as Barry is telling you. So, so I think I just, I'll put the super back, Barry. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so course, she, yeah. she could mate with the drones that she's actually uh, laid herself. Is that what you're saying? The, the, the drones would follow her out. She wouldn't have laid herself. Her mother would. 
Her mother would have laid the eggs. The daughter can't lay yet because she can't lay until she's made. Uh, all oh, right. Um, she cook, what you're saying okay. is, could she make with the brother? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm sorry. Um, I was getting a bit confused. Um, so, yeah. So this is the queen, the queen, the virgin queen that goes out. Um, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be... Wouldn't she still be related to the drones in the same hive? Very possible. Very um, possible. It's a, it's a chance it that you matter. take, but she would normally make between, between six and eight or even ten drones on that first flight. She doesn't yeah. make just one drone, so you're getting a, a, quite an yeah. assortment of... Okay. If you remember, right. a, drone, <laughs> a drone doesn't have a father. A female bee has a no. father, because it's not mm. father by the queen. But the drone doesn't have a father, it's, so no. it's all the drones of the queen. 100% drones of the queen. So if you've got um, five or six hives down full of drones, when a queen comes out to mate, she comes out once or twice and goes out to climatize herself in the outside world. She doesn't issue any pheromones. One day she's going okay. to mate today. It's like a, a, a cat or a dog. They, they all have to mate and she will start issuing pheromones. And at that point, you'll see all the drones from all the other hives come tearing out and they will chase her. As soon as she comes out the hive, they're waiting for her, and they, they go, and okay. the fastest drone catches up, and they will mate. Yeah. She will obviously slow the, drone, slow the queen down, so the other drones will catch up. But you're yeah. hoping that the drones from um, the other hives along which you're wanting to mate with, she should theoretically mate with, with about eight or nine drones. So you're, you're almost sure she's not going to mate with nine of her, of her brothers. Ah, good, yeah. 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 So one thing, one, yeah. one, one thing for the uh, for the beekeeper or for the people who are uh, watching this who've never been in a, in a hive before. Yeah. Um, if you've picked in said right now, you probably know more than the majority of beekeepers out there. Always <laughs> 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 say that. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Ask me another easier question, Barry. <laughs> I don't know whether I know more, but anyway, um, do, you, do you want to count how much battery have you got in your... I've got no idea how much battery I've got left. While I'm showing this, I can't look at the battery, but it seems to be, seems to be going fine. Okay. Let, let, let's kind of... So you wanted to make up a, a nuke colony? Yes. So if, um, we'll, we can talk about that and any questions. So let's, before we go on to that, so this is a bit more about how you might set up a new colony of bees. We're going to go through that, but right. yeah, for beginner beginner beekeepers or beginners or people who are just curious to know what's going on, if you have any questions, then then fire away. All right. Hello, I had a question. Hello, Nicole. Yeah. Yep. Hello, I was wondering, how do you tell the difference between regular brood and drone brood? You, you sort of mentioned the two, but I couldn't tell the difference. Okay, yeah, just find some drone worker brood. What's the difference between regular brood and drone brood? Yes, the, 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 um, when the, basically speaking, when you're looking for drone brood, you're looking for a slightly larger cell. Um, that one, so we'll put it down in a second. The drones are typically quite a bit bigger than, than worker bees. So that the, the the cells that they grow up in they are, are are quite a bit bigger. There there is a bit of drone brood. Yeah. It's sort of yeah. protruding. So, see the cells are larger. This is a normal. That's a normal. Now, when a queen lays an egg in there, the queen it's the the, um, the, the queen is not going to fertilise it because she knows that the the cell she laid it is in bigger than the. The normal cell, so she can she has the ability of fertilising the eggs or not fertilising them. Do you see the different size of the cells there? Not a huge difference, but yeah. they are they are different. The ones that ones to the right are the drone cells. They're probably half a dozen, and then the ones all the rest of them up to the left are the worker cells. Yeah, these are normal worker cells. You've got oh, the eggs in there, and that, that, that bit of drone comb there is what what the bees make when they want the drones. Have you got cap brood um, for drone? Uh, have you got any capped worker and drone? Do you have any cap drone? Cap drone. 
we did have in the, in the bottom box. Yes, here you are. Exactly what you're asking for. This is cap drone. You see it's slightly larger. The, the drone is a larger bee than a, than a worker bee. So it has to have a larger comb. So when the bees lay the eggs, when the queen lays the eggs in a normal cell, the bees then have to extend that cell. If you can look sideways onto it, you'll see yeah. it's about a quarter of an inch longer Oh, wow. so yeah. yeah, and if you look at the, there's some worker cells there. These are worker cells. They're, they're flat against the comb. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a good. Yeah. Um, there we go. Comparison, yeah. And there's Very some cap honey there as well. <laughs> um, please, can I ask, um, are the drones and queens and workers different from the minute they're laid as an egg, or is it to do with how they're managed, how they're fed, the size of the cell? The uh, eggs are yeah, they, are they, are they, are they strictly types of being different from the minute the egg is laid, or are they? Yes, it is definitely different from the minute the egg is laid. Um, the bees can in, can in fact, if necessary, if they're short of drones, for example, they can transfer a female egg into a drone cell. It will then become a drone as well. Oh, wow. They can make their own drones, certainly. One, one thing that's uh, different with the queen is that when the egg is laid, um, the bees will decide that they want it to be a queen rather than a regular worker. So they'll feed it a much, they'll give it, put it in a bigger cell, or it will lay its egg in a bigger cell. The queen will lay the egg in a bigger cell and the bees will feed it, will feed it a much richer mix of, roy, of royal jelly ra rather than just um, plain honey and pollen and turn it, turn it into a queen. Oh, so any egg could become a queen if it's fed the right diet and put in the right place. Is that right? Exactly, exactly right, yes. yes. Uh, but it has, to happen, it has to happen in the first day or two after that egg hatches. So after the three days of being an egg, it hatches to a very, very young larva. Hardly, you can hardly see it in your eye. Um, but then if you feed that differently, it will turn into a queen. And that, that's a trick that beekeepers um, make a lot of use of um, to breed their own queens. Terry? Is that the same, is that the same if you want a drone? Is that the same if you want a drone? They, they transfer the, um, the egg from the, um, the bee to the the you know the female to the um the dr to a drone size um cell and um, then it becomes a drone does it do they feed it any differently no they don't feed they don't feed drones any differently no they don't no. The, the drones it's take just 24 size. days to hatch you see so they just a different size cell that they like uh, it, when you say feed them differently just a different, it's just a different makeup of food yes the um the drones get honey only Bees get pollen and honey, and the queen gets royal jelly. So uh, they're fed differently okay. according to what they are. Okay. We've got short okay. questions again, mm -hmm. aren't you? Yeah, I just wondered, um, they, uh, when you extract honey from the hive, um, I'm presuming it's from the combs that just have honey in, or am I wrong? Uh, that's a very good point. Um, so, we, what we've been looking at here is the what we call the brood box. So this is the box that has um, the bees, the queen, and all the larvae, <clears throat> and very very little honey. What you, as a, norm, a normal beehive, on top of this would have what's called a, a queen excluder, which is a, a sheet um, full of small holes that a worker bee can get through, but a queen can't get through. I was just about to put a queen excluder on now. Um, so this is a queen excluder. And then above, above this, this layer, you have uh, more boxes with frames that the bees can store honey in, but they can only store honey in there. So the queen can't get up in there to uh, lay any eggs. So it's all honey. That's I understand. Um, the, other, the other question I have that's related to that is I've heard that uh, honey is the bees' food through the winter, so presumably, do they, do they happily make more than they need so you can take some, or how does that work? Um, they do. Um, so it de 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 depending on your on your on your beekeeper. So typically, you would take off honey um, 
probably by the end of, end of August. And then the bees have got from August through till um, probably till October to, to restock. Um, or you can you could leave some leave some honey on for them um, to, to last over the, over the winter. See, that is out the super. That's off this hive, which we took off because we didn't think you'd be interested in this, but that's full of honey. Can you see the honey in there? Yeah. Not sealed. It'll be sealed next week, but it's, um, it's just the outside yeah. comb. It's still but being dried. Yeah, sometimes the uh, beekeepers need to supplement the feed um, with, um, with syrup um, for, for winter, so if they haven't managed to store in a poor colony and you haven't even got, got any honey off yourself, they, uh, they may need to be effectively subsidised with, um, with syrup. But they take it fine and it's no, it, it's no problem for them. I will show you quickly to, to help the, um, the beekeepers out there that don't know much about queen rearing. If you get a little mini nuke. It's breaking up. Um, yeah. We use to, to um, these, are, these are what's called a mini nuke. Now if you, you put about two cups full of bees in there, and it means really two cups full of bees. So you basically shake bees into a yes, really. in, into the bottom of a into into a bucket, and then you can scoop up a couple of bees. We'll show you, shall we? <laughs> Have we got enough time yet? It's ten to twelve. Ten to twelve. Okay. So one thing that uh, one thing you know as a beekeeper, but you don't realise as a non-beekeeper, is that not all bees are equal, and the bees that are generally working on the combs, on the supers and in the, in the brew box are young bees and they're un very unlikely to sting. So you can, you can um, sort of shake them into buckets and uh, so what you do, do very to make, to make up your mini nuke, you put it in a bucket and you shake the bees in like that. You've got the bees in there. Do you see that? Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> one, one tap and all this. All in there. Watch, watch it again. Right. Boom. So you put a couple of combs in like that. And you might need a few more, so we'll have a few more. So now we've got. Now we've lightened the bucket. Yeah. That's it. Now you shake them, put them in like, like that. Oh, 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 Last on it. This is more what you're expecting of the bees, aren't you? You're like, you want the bees <laughs> flying around a lot, so. That's it, you've got a mini nuke. You waited till the end and you were <laughs> stretched about this. I'm just getting slightly nervous here now. So you go to another hive now. <laughs> <laughs> they are only wearing a shirt. <laughs> I'll do it for you in a minute. Yeah, that's it. Now you can see the bees flying around. You didn't put any. You didn't put any cell in your mini nuke. In your mini nuke, you didn't, didn't put anything like didn't quite catch that, sorry. like a queen cell or. You'll put a queen cell in another hive. Show you. Just a minute. Yep. Yeah. Have to do the hard bit first. Mary just wants to get another. Um, a queen cell ready to pop, pop in there. This might be my present, so uh... <laughs> no, I, well, I should be taking him really for using that. Using his, uh, you might lose the signal that way. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. So we, we set the things up this morning. We were gonna look at the hives down there, but we couldn't actually uh, get a Wi-Fi signal there. So this is Barry's queen, queen breeding. He uh, pops the young egg. Or a, a larva, a day old larva, into these, into these little cells, and then uh, pops them into the hive that doesn't have a queen in it, and they automatically build it out into queen cells, and then you've got a whole load of queen cells, and then you can make up a new colony. So you take you take the um, the queen cells out of there, and then you say right, well, you use that one for example. So you get hold of it, push it out, and there is your queen cell. That you would put in the mini nuke. That looks a bit like a peanut, doesn't it? Yes. That's to go in a the mini nuke, yes. 
Yeah, so Barry will tell you exactly when this, this uh, cell is due to hatch. It's probably in about three or four days' time. And um, beekeeping is a long game for those who are interested. Um, I didn't realise that. I thought you could just set things up and immediately you get lots of honey. Um, it doesn't quite work like that. So with these mini nukes, these colonies that are built up, possibly by next year, they, they may be good, um, good, good full-size production colonies. So it's a bit, a bit like gardening. It, it takes, takes a few years to get your, your colonies mature and ready and uh, produce, producing honey. Or if you've got, like me, a barrier out, so you can't hear, can't hear it right now, but I've got a, a top bar hive on my allotment and uh, that, that's more just to watch the bees and see how they develop. So that, that's a queen case that you would normally put a queen in. But all we're going to do at the moment is take the end out of the queen cage, put this cell in there like that. Yep. Open that. Turn that round because we got it on the wrong way. And pop that in there like that. And you've got the queen in there, queen, the queen cell in there, enough bees, pop lid on. And you must remember that bees have got a two day memory. So this nucleus, little mooning nucleus, has got to go in the, in a dark place for a couple of days before you let them loose. So in two days, that will hatch into uh, the fully fledged queen. Oh, sorry, two, two days you can let it out and the queen will hatch on the 28th. 